Lots and lots of gunfire is not gonna really raise that many eyebrows. People are gonna be like, hmm, what's that, what's that shooting? I'm gonna call 911 and, and immediately get help out there. No one's gonna do that. Solar perimeter alarm. Emotionally, that is a deterrent for people because they're, they're taking on risk at that point. Solar motion sensing lights are... So it's our primary responsibility to protect our families. And you would have no idea they were there until they were on you and it might be too late. Just setting up some booty traps. That's what I said, booty traps. <laughs> Why are they called booby traps? They don't, they don't resemble boobies in any way. Not real sure what that's all about. <laughs> Just thinking about that hurts so bad. <laughs> Can you imagine stepping on a screw? A nail hurts. I've stepped on a nail and it's gone all the way into my foot and on nearly out the top of my foot. But uh, I've never stepped on a screw like that before. Just, oh gosh, how would you get your foot? I mean, you'd have to rip it off. Oh. Maybe if somebody was underneath and unscrewed it. <laughs> We've all seen Home Alone. This stuff works, man. Maybe there might potentially come a time somewhere in the future where booby traps such as this might become a necessity. You know, most likely you're gonna end up catching the, the neighbor's kid or the deer's gonna step on it. You know, all the people that talk about putting the barbed wire, the razor wire through the bushes and stuff, you know, that's, that's what you're gonna catch. You're gonna catch the, the deer trying to get through. So I wouldn't advise these types of measures to keep people off of your property as of now, unless you really, really enjoy getting sued and or possibly going to jail from injuring some would-be intruder. Although I think my favorite booby trap from Home Alone is going to be the paint cans on the rope swinging on the staircase. That one's pretty good. I enjoy that. The bricks, that's not really a booby trap. He's just throwing bricks off the roof and hitting Marv. That was pretty good. I enjoyed that thoroughly. What's your favorite booby trap? These little solar perimeter alarms are kind of cool. I've never used them before, but I've been on the hunt for them for a little while and just recently picked this one up. The company's called Wooloo. It had good, it had good reviews. Haven't tested it for any length of period of time. I know it works because I tested it in the house, but other than that, I don't know if it's a solid system or not. But what I want to do is install this on a main entryway onto my property so that if anybody comes on here without me knowing, because I can't see this entryway from my house. Maggie, come. Get away from the road. Because I can't see this entryway from my house, I would like to have a heads up if somebody is entering my property without permission, obviously. So... So I want to install this someplace where the sun's going to potentially hit it and it'll stay charged. They say it will stay, it will work up to two years off an initial full charge, which this is fully charged up. So even without sunshine hitting it, it should continue to work for a long, long time. But I'd like to have it continuously charged by the sunshine if possible. So I'm going to put it up here where it's a little bit clearer. And uh, anybody that comes down my, my secondary driveway right here, I'll get a little bit of a chime. I'll be able to hear and have a heads up at least a couple minutes warning before somebody can be literally at my front door. All right, let's see if it works. This way I know that if I get a ding, a ding from channel one, I know that it's coming from this, coming from the uphill uh, driveway up here. You know, perhaps maybe the smartest thing to do if things were to get really bad around here is just to shut this upper road off. And that could be said for any road that you don't want people to have access to. I would just take some of these bigger trees, some of these big monster pines right here probably, and I would just use a chainsaw or an ax or whatever you got use a chainsaw I'll be the fastest and I would just lay them across this road and do several of them and then it would take a significant amount of effort for anyone to clear that out of the way if they really wanted to use this road and without question you'd hear them coming because there's no possible way to move something like that out of the way 
without making a lot of racket. Let's go set the other one up, Mags. So it's our primary responsibility to protect our families and as much as we can possibly do to keep bad guys at bay and outside of our perimeter, I mean, why not do it? I mean, obviously this is a little bit of expense. They're not very expensive. I think the system costs 60 bucks and it comes with two of these sensors and I could buy additional sensors to go along with it. And I think I'd like to have at least two more for a couple of other spots around the property that are easier access. Now I know what you're thinking. I think you're thinking, well, you could just walk around the thing. Path of least resistance is what most people will take and criminals are not always that smart. They might just stroll down the driveway in hopes that they'll come across some opportunity to steal something or to hurt somebody. So I think anything that we can do to deter people and even and another thing what you're thinking is that this is out in the open. They'll just see it and they'll walk around it. Yeah, maybe they'll see it and they'll think hmm, that place, maybe the juice isn't worth the squeeze and I'll just move on down the road to something else. And that goes for all these other things as well, like like a gate, like this gate right here. Yes, a truck could just smash through this gate and plow through it and just take it down. No problem. It wouldn't be that big of a deal but it's a deterrent. Even if this gate is wide open. Even if my gate is wide open, right? It's still a mental barrier. It's still something that I have to cross, a line that I have to cross. And it's emotionally, that is a deterrent for people because they're, they're taking on risk at that point. Once they cross that line, whether it's an invisible line or not, they crossed a line and that is taking some risk upon themselves and bad guys for the most part, unless they're absolutely crazy, they don't want to get hurt. They don't want to get caught. So they'll just move on to easier prey. The next driveway down the road doesn't have a gate on it. So they'll possibly just move on to that one. It's easier for them. Having a pooch such as this one, one that barks at pretty much everything that comes near the driveway or stops at the mailbox, anything that comes on the property, she barks at. And that is super, super handy and very reliable. If she's outside of the house at all, she will bark at pretty much anything that comes around that's, that's not welcome here. Even stuff that she's used to, like, you know, my parents come down or something, she'll still bark at them as they're coming onto the property until she, you know, figures out who it is pretty much. So that's really, really handy. And it doesn't have to be some ferocious, you know, meat eating, uh, limb removing, uh, jugular biting, Fido such as this one right here, this this Cujo, it doesn't have to be as intimidating as her. It could be, you know, any little ankle biter, anything that will alert you because dogs, regardless of the breed, have really, really keen vision, keen hearing, and keen noses that can alert you to possible dangers and anybody coming onto your property that shouldn't be there. So I go back and forth between wanting privacy and security, right? Obviously, I like privacy because I don't want people peeking into my windows. I don't want every car that drives by be able to see down here what I'm doing. I, don't, I, like, I like having a little bit of privacy. But at the same time, privacy means if they can't see you, that means you can't see them potentially. Potentially. There's some ways around that, but, but potentially that's what that means. So if I've got my entire house surrounded by forest, like in this area where I live, a lot of cabins like to have their homes right in the woods and the trees are all the way around. And you would potentially not be able to see somebody before they're there. They could be on your door before you even know that they're there. You couldn't see them coming. Now, for security reasons, it's probably beneficial in a lot of ways to just straight up clear the land. Have 300 yards and 360 degrees all the way around your property completely cleared out so there's no possible way somebody could find any cover or concealment on the way to your property to your to your home your actual house so there's definitely some advantages to that but again i don't want to clear cut my property because i like having the trees around i like having the the uh, the foliage i like having a little bit of privacy from the road and whatnot 
So, but I think there's a balance to be had there. Very purposefully, I've, I've cut some tunnels, some pathways through the foliage so I can see longer distances across fields like on my property. So like right here, for example, I can see about 75 yards in all directions, at least 75 yards in all directions and further in some directions because I've thinned out the, all of this thicket. This used to be really overgrown and really, really thick but I've thinned it out quite a bit so I can see what's going on over here. It still offers me some privacy from the road, but it'd be very difficult for somebody just to walk up onto my house. Now these woods behind me, that's a different story. The woods are much, much closer. A few years ago, I worked on opening up the forest behind my house and clearing that up and opening up a little bit so I can see further and get a little bit more visual going on. That has since overgrown quite a bit. I live in the jungle and when you don't keep on, you don't stay on top of it, it will just quickly grow up. Living in a rural area is not without some, some problems when it comes to security. First off, you are much further from help. So if you should need some help, you've got a potential bad guy trying to get into your house to harm you, steal things, whatever. You are much further from any aid as far as police or, or friends or other family members or whatever. So that is a problem. So you're going to be, have to be a lot more self-reliant in that aspect, at least initially in the beginning, in the, in the few minutes that are the most critical probably. If you live in a more suburban type area, you're going to have a lot more eyeballs around you. You're going to have a lot more people that can see what's going on and possibly alert you to the danger, call for help, or aid, actually help with themselves. You know, if you live in a neighborhood and you hear glass breaking, chances are someone's probably going to hear that and someone's going to look and see if it's a problem. If Somebody breaks my window on my house here, ain't nobody gonna hear that but me or if I'm home, you know? So no one, none of the neighbors are gonna come responding to a piece of glass being broken. Now, if my house is being shot full of holes, that might be a different story, but, but even then, you know, gunshots out here are very common, very, very common. Even lots of gunfire, there's shooting ranges all over the place. Everybody's got a backyard shooting range. So lots and lots of gunfire is not going to really raise that many eyebrows. People are going to be like, hmm, what's that, what's that shooting? I'm going to call 911 and, and immediately get help out there. No one's going to do that. No chance. I'd bet a lot of money on it, especially, you know, in current times. Maybe if things get a little bit worse and, and the world starts continually falling apart as it is and getting much, much worse, you know, people are not going to be target shooting so much and any shots that you hear are going to mean something. But at the moment, they don't really mean anything. Having these holly type bushes with these sharp, pointy leaves. I hate these plants actually. They're the worst. Having these underneath windows around your property is not necessarily a bad idea and it's also not necessarily a good idea either because one, well, so let's talk about why it might be a good idea. If you've got these sharp, pokey, impenetrable plants that are close to your, your windows, your doors, people are going to be much less likely to try to push through those and get to your window, right? But then again, it offers a place for someone to hide. So for example, if I was walking around the side of my house or my wife was coming out of the front of the house or whatever it is, there could very easily be somebody concealed in the bushes right here. And you would have no idea they were there until they were on you and it might be too late. So having plants and shrubbery and bushes and stuff like that around your house is good in one aspect that it might keep some people away from those areas of of entry, such as your windows, but it offers a lot of concealment for a, a would-be bad guy to ambush you as well. So I took, again, again, a few years ago, I took the time to clear all these bushes right here and to thin, to thin out some of the foliage around my house so I could see what's going on and I could, I could look over the railing and, and have a good visual. No one could be hiding there in the bushes. Um, but again, they're starting to grow back. So at night, it's time to start clearing it out. I cleared all this behind me a few years back, but like you can see, it's starting to grow back again, just a few years later. So I've got to thin that again. So now when I look out my windows, I can see what's going on here in the woods up behind my house. Isn't it the, uh, the Chinese, when they were building the great wall of China that they cleared, I forget what it was, this, you know, uh, couple of kilometers on both sides of that great wall. So there's no possible way of an enemy approaching and sneaking up. So there's definitely some tr strategic value in clearing the land around your home. I've got my wife listening to the chime inside the house to make sure, I wanna make sure that the range is okay. 
They say 1,800 feet, and this is definitely less than 1,800 feet, So, but I just want to confirm that before we uh, call it good. All right, let's, let's head back and check in. Oh, it's cold on my hands this morning. Yowza. Did you get one and two? Both one and two yeah. chimed. So here's one of the tunnels in the foliage that I was talking about where I can see much, much further distances than I would have before I cleared that out. And this bridge here, for example, is a path of least resistance. This is a possible place where someone's going to come across and get closer to my house. Um, now, obviously, obviously, you could cross the creek right here and avoid going across this bridge and you could do it in a much more sneaky type way than just walking waltzing across the bridge but you'd have to be pretty determined to do so and yes i get it a lot of you know there's a lot of very determined bad guys out there and a lot of very intelligent bad guys out there but we're talking about the masses and we're talking about the bulk of of would-be intruders they're going to take the path of least resistance please tell me in the comment section other ideas that you would have for securing the perimeter around your home. Now, if times got really, really tough, I could potentially just remove this bridge altogether and force anybody that wants to come from this direction to cross the stream, and therefore forcing them to come from a different direction that's much more predictable and easier to defend. It's by far the easiest way to get onto the property here behind the camera closer to my house is, is by coming across this bridge. The most difficult way is by trudging through all the briars and brambles and the privet hedge and all that's that's really tough to get through i mean you have to really really want to get through that i, I mean that's i mean let me show you what it's like going through there hold on <laughs> this is a nasty thicket of briars and grape vines and privet hedge and it is nearly impenetrable without a machete hacking and slashing your way through yes you could definitely do that but you'd also make a lot of noise so this is probably the clearest spot that there is right here and once you get past this you are stuck be a nightmare to get through there so even if it wasn't for the briars that continuously get caught on your clothing it's still really tough to get through this mess right here and this is probably the easiest spot that I could find because it's easier to film. <laughs> the rest of it is a nightmare and I don't even I don't even want to try to go through it because I just end up tearing up my clothes. But so with the exception of that one crap. Ah. With the exception of a couple of tunnels that I've cut through the foliage back here, all these briars. Um this is what it's like. It's it's really really tough to get onto my property through this nastiness and I've left it here on purpose. I'd like to clear it up a little bit. Honestly, I'd like to, you know, manicure it a little bit more, make it look nicer and be able to see a little bit further and that kind of stuff, but but for security reasons, I think it's important to leave it here. Oh, see? This is honeysuckle on top of it. <laughs> So I can anticipate the path of least resistance and know which direction people will most likely be coming across onto my property. One of the most dangerous things out there is gonna be the guy in the, the camo hunting shirt and pants with a 22, 100 yards away in the woods up there and he'd have no idea. If they're just sitting still and they're not moving, you'd have no clue. And that's a very, very dangerous thing. And that's, I think that's where knowing all your neighbors, having a, a community around you is going to be even more more important is so you can anticipate troubles like that if there's a sketchy guy in the neighborhood and you need to be on a lookout for him then maybe you'll catch wind of it if, if you've had if you built those relationships with the people around you because otherwise 
you know, just some stray vagabond coming through, picking off people as he goes. That's a very, very dangerous thing, and there's just not much you could do about it. I mean, think about it. Put yourself in the bad guy's position. How easy would it be if you were armed with just a simple little 1022, tucked off in the woods somewhere? Don't, not even you don't even have to have camouflage on. How dangerous is that? How dangerous could you be? Solar motion sensing lights are also a really good one. I can see this one from my bedroom window. So if somebody's out here at the barn and they set this thing off, the light comes on and I can see what's going on out here. And bad guys don't like to be in the light. They like to be in the darkness where they think no one can see them. So these things are really, really handy and not very expensive. And I've got these all over the place. Cameras are great. Again, not because they stop anybody, but because bad guys don't want to get caught. And they know if they're on camera, there's a potential for them to get caught. So if they know you've got cameras, not necessarily hidden ones around, but very obvious places where they can't easily access them, but they see them, they're going to move on to easier prey where they're most likely not going to get caught. Now, I know what you're thinking. What if the threat is zombies? You know what I mean? It's always important to have a couple of really good zombie weapons laying around, melee weapons, so you can defeat the zombie hordes. So keep that in mind and be prepared. Now, maybe what you're saying is that this isn't applicable to me because I live in an apartment or a condo or a, or a neighborhood where the houses are really, really close together and I don't have property per se. Yeah, I mean, I get that. So there's, there's only so much you can do in that type of situation. Get an extra deadbolt for your, uh, for your door. Uh, but that's going to probably come down more to tactics than anything else. Again, know your neighbors. Know who the people are in your immediate vicinity on the floor of the building that you live in. Above you and below you, meet as many people as you can and befriend as many people as you can. And learn who's who. People that you should look out for, people that you, watch, you should watch out for, untrustworthy type characters if the world should fall to crap. And there's suddenly a, a, an opportunity for those unsavory individuals to start taking advantage of the people around them. So learning your neighbors, I think, is a really, really important one if you are in that type of situation. Um, and then tactics, don't open the door. You know, you know what I mean? Securing your perimeter. Keep the door closed. Take a look through that peephole. Don't be friendly per se. Talk to people through closed doors, through locked doors, and be armed. Be ready to go at a moment's notice. Having some sort of family defense plan, I think, is important. Not just that you know. I mean, obviously, you can plan things out and you can be trained up and you know where to go and where the best cover is and concealment. Yes, but what about the rest of the individuals in your family? Do they know what to do if something should go wrong, if an intruder should come onto the property, if someone's trying to beat down the door? Uh, who knows what could happen, but do they know what to do in a situation like that? Do they know, do they know what the safest places in your home are? I know, if, like for example, with my kids, I've gone over one of the safest locations in the home. And if someone's trying to get into the house, they need to arm themselves. They need to get to that location as quickly as possible and be ready to defend themselves. You have a, a good close neighbor on speed dial that you can get them here as quickly as possible. Like for example, someone came on to my property and was rooting around in my barn and my wife called the police and then she called my friends and guess who showed up first? My friends were here significantly faster, significantly faster response time than the police. I would argue that they're just as, if not better trained for the situation at hand to take care of business. So I think that it's, again, important to have friends. I think it's important to have a network of individuals that you can trust, that you can count on and call for help when needed. So we can't live our lives in fear, guys. We have to continue to enjoy our lives. We have to continue to have people over to our homes. We have to um, celebrate the small victories and the birthdays and, the, and all of the things. And we have to enjoy our lives. I, I, I really feel that we shouldn't stop doing that stuff just because the world is getting scarier. I think we need to continue that more than ever because that's what develops those tight bonds and in, in the strong communities. But we have to do everything in our power to continue to improve not only ourselves as far as our training and, and first aid and, and self-defense and all of those things. Uh, we have to continue to improve those, but we have to to build our infrastructure around us, build our wall. Now, ideally, yeah, I would I would put a you know 10 foot 12 foot wall all the way around my property that, that that no one could get across and it'd be electric electrified and and there'd be guns on turrets you know motion sensors all of those things yeah that'd be great but obviously we're all on budgets and those 60 dollar motion sensor chimes are one more step in the right direction putting up a gate and a barbed wire fence 
are all not impenetrable barriers, but they're they're psychological barriers to a would-be bad guy. One way of looking at it is that they could say, okay, this person clearly has something worth taking. Or they'll look at it and say, and most likely what they'll say is that this place is not as easy as the house next door. I'm just going to move on down the road to easier prey. And that sucks for the easier prey, but we are all responsible for our homes and our families first. So do the best you can to protect them. And this one might seem a little silly to some and maybe a little bit overkill, but I've got things like this stashed all over the place. <laughs> just just ready to go. So if I was to be caught a, with my pants down and a little unprepared, a little less prepared than I normally am, as far as what I'm carrying on me, I've always got something close at hand and I don't necessarily have to improvise a weapon. It's it's already ready. <laughs> something else I've been discussing with friends is that is that if times would get significantly worse than they are now. I mean, times are still good where I live. I live in a safe community. We don't have much crime. You know, we've got our tweakers and meth heads and and some drug dealing and that kind of stuff going on, but but pretty much all of Appalachia does. The um, uh, We don't have major crime issues at the moment. There's not home invasions every day. There's there's not murders going going on left and right in the streets. That's just not something that's happening at the moment. But if things were to get much, much worse, if times were to get much, much harder than they currently are, I might potentially change the way I just live my life just in general. If it's still just me and my family living here, me and my wife and kids, I might change the way I live my life and maybe I'm just sleeping outside. You know, I've got a, and it's just me, me being a buffer between them and the bad guys. I can be outside, I can hear stuff that's going on. Me and the dog could be sleeping outside and we could hear anything that's going on. We can see something before it comes and we could possibly get the drop on something that's that, that wants to harm us. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Leave lots of comments. Tell me what you would be doing different. Tell me some of the things that you've done to protect your family, to protect your home. I'd love to hear that in the comments section. Thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I cannot wait to see you on the next one. I'm Jason Salyer with Survival Dispatch. As a Survival Dispatch Insider, you'll be able to gain the knowledge, the skills, and equipment necessary to protect your family when it really, really matters. They'll provide crucial information on such things as stockpiling food, medical necessities, communication plans. You will receive specific actionable plans. You can deliver proven techniques to help you get home, shelter in place, or bug out safe.